Hi, I'm Jennifer Waters, the director of the Nikon Imaging Center at Harvard Medical School, and this presentation is on why we recommend that you avoid unnecessary pseudocoloring. The detectors we use in microscopy, such as CCD cameras, SCMOS cameras, and photomultiplier tubes, detect photons, but they don't report the wavelength of the photons. Black and white detectors are better for fluorescence microscopy than color detectors because they're more sensitive. But we don't need the detector to report wavelengths because we use fluorescence filters to select for the wavelengths of light we expect from our samples. So the images that these detectors generate are grayscale or black and white images. And if we want them to be colored, then we use digital image processing to add false color to the images. A pseudocolored image is simply an image in which the grayscale values have been replaced with color. Pseudocoloring is performed in software using what's called a lookup table. A lookup table is an array of values that are used instead of computation. So instead of computing what color to use, the value is simply looked up in a table, and that saves processing time. Pseudocolor lookup tables are a very simple conversion. So for example, make the highest intensity values in the image green, the lowest intensity values in the image black, and all the values in between a mix of the two. This would give us a green image. So how do you decide what color to use when you're gonna pseudo color an image? Your microscope might have been set up so that it looks like you're not deciding. Maybe you click the acquire button in the software and a pseudo colored image pops up. In this case, your software has been configured to automatically apply a lookup table to every image. You can change the settings in the software to remove the lookup table so that the image you get when you hit the acquire button is grayscale. We often hear people say that they pseudocolor images based on the color of the fluorophore. I get that logic, but it's not set in stone that DAPI must be blue. I think you should choose the color scheme for your images, not based on the default in the software or the color of the fluorophore, but instead choose a color that provides the best view of your data. High contrast fluorescence images look the best. Bright pixels against a dark background pop out at the viewer. Take a look at these images. To my eye and probably to yours, the green looks the brightest and the blue looks the dimmest. But these are actually all the same image. Different lookup tables have been applied to create the different colors. Each image actually has the same range of grayscale values, but they appear different brightnesses depending on the color that we choose to use for pseudocoloring. And if we compare the color images to the black and white images, I think you'll agree that none of the colors look brighter than the black and white image. Different colors appear different intensity because of what's called the luminosity function of our eyes. The transmission of light through the materials in your eye varies with wavelength, and the sensitivity of the cells in your retina also varies with wavelength. The result is that green looks the brightest to us, and blue and red look the dimmest. But if the goal is to display an image that looks bright and has the highest contrast, why not use the whole spectrum of colors? All of the colors combine to make white, and that's why grayscale images look the brightest to us and have the highest contrast. In case you're not convinced yet, let's take a closer look at these images of mitochondria. The only difference between these two images is I've applied a blue lookup table in Fiji to the image on the right. Look how much more difficult it is to see the individual mitochondria in the blue image. I can try to crank up the brightness and contrast of the blue image, but it still doesn't look as bright as the grayscale image. That's just the way our eyes work. And remember, this is false color that provides no information to the reader except an indication of the emission wavelength of the fluorophore. But you can provide that information in the figure legend or in text on the image. If you're creating an overlay of the images, you will need to use color. But if you're making a figure that includes the single channel images, they'll look the brightest if you display them in grayscale. You can then use colored text to make it easier for the reader to identify the corresponding image in the overlay. So remember, blue dappy is hard to see, but it looks great in grayscale.